Amagi Metals, where financial freedom is yours. Theo with Greater Cleveland Cop Block, here in Detroit with the Cop Block Tour. Came all the way out here to visit with my buddy Pete, my new friend Garrett. Love you guys. Learned a lot of stuff today from uh, Dale Brown of Threat Management Center. Excellent, excellent source of information. Police can learn a lot of lessons from this guy. Absolutely. And it's not the officer that's the problem. It's not the officer that made up these rules. The officer is part of a system that told them that their safety is paramount. What's most important to the officer is they get home to their family at night. What I tell people is, and this is what we stole in our program, what's most important is that other people get home to their families at night, and then once we make sure they get home to their family at night, we can then go home to our family, knowing that we made sure they got to their family safe at night. Being a police officer, I have been able to see both sides of the fence, if you will. Police are more trained and adapted to handling things aggressively because we are the authority. We are the law. You will do what we say. Whereas threat management services more asks the person to think of a situation prior to commencing whatever they're intending on doing. And every human predator wants a way out of violence. They think they want violence, but they truly don't. They wanted violence, they go find violent people. They look for soft targets. They look for situations where they think they can win. It's your job to make sure they know absolutely they cannot win, and guess what? There's nothing to win. The enemy is not him. The enemy is the violence he's going to perpetrate. So once I get him to not want to do the, the, the violence, we're fine. And all I'm going to do is join him. I'm going to mirror him psychologically. So when he says, I can't believe he fired me. I can't believe that my employee pissed me off. I can't believe she did this. Whatever it is, whatever he's angry about, I'm going to come over and I'm going to be just as angry as him, if not more angry. He's going to have to try to calm me down because he and I are against whatever this is. They said he has to leave this restaurant. I go, I hate this restaurant anyway. I hate Italian food. I hate it. Psychologically, subconsciously, he, he knows I'm not his enemy also because of the way I'm grabbing him. I'm not collaring him. I'm, I'm manipulating his body against his will because he wants to stay here, but the elbows give me control. Physically, I can still manipulate, no matter how we have to do this, and maintain control without making him feel Inferior. that he's being humiliated, yeah. uh, aggressed upon, or injured. He is literally being biomechanically dominated in a peaceful way. So there's no actual impact, no injury. Psychologically, we're communicating in a positive way, and this creates a non-adversarial relationship. Our rich clients generally don't have any danger. It's Hollywood. They just have lots of money. So we use the fact that they have lots of money in order to afford the fuel and the vehicles and everything else that we use to help real people that are in extreme danger. I mean, just the service that you guys provide it's like just the sense of knowing that, okay, I'm going to be able to get into the courthouse, be able to give whatever type of testimony I have to give, and I'll be able to get back to my car safe. Even just that sense of, you know, that sense of security is, is priceless. It's priceless. I mean. All right, it's 6.10 p.m. Uh, your name, sir? Robert Gold. Okay, and you called for assistance with a vehicle that was parked in front of your home? Right, right in front and right where our walk is. Okay, and were you satisfied with our response? Very. Okay, and we were able to get the vehicle out of here without an incident? Absolutely. Okay, sir. Thank you. Is there anything else we can do for you today? No, I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. All right. Just so you can see what everyone else is doing. This shows he was here. See, that's the picture. This gives the date and time he was here. This shows where he's going. This is his route. That's his name. Yeah, that's great. Transparency. That's really it is cool. transparency. And I, hey, we're not going into a, a structure to be killed or to kill someone over toasters and TVs. It's not going to happen. And that's by design. You know, there's two, just two frames of thought. I will engage with the idea that I will be uh, dominant in violence. Or you can say, I will go forward with the idea that I will not let anything create violence. And they're, they're opposing ideas with the same exact circumstances. Do not shoot anyone else's family member before you shoot your own family member in that same exact condition, that same situation. So if your uncle had a gun and he was standing there being threatening, would you shoot them now or would you talk to your uncle longer? Even in a situation where we are using live ammunition and a live firearm, we have to shoot second. That's not very fair in a gunfight, but 
We're not supposed to be in gunfights. That, according to our philosophy, we're against gunfighting. So if you have to shoot second, there'd be no way for you to actually shoot someone with a toy gun or a fake gun. It's impossible. And so once you explain it like that, it makes it easy. The rules of engagement are very easy. Don't use violence unless there is absolutely really no other choice. We want to make sure that we don't produce people that are inherently inappropriate by psychologically preparing them. So one of the things I do is I explain that it's better to die than it is to shoot the wrong person even once. He, he should be training police all over the country, honestly. This is an air canister that when the pin is pulled and thrown, a very large distraction, distracting sound uh, is um, emitted, which distracts violent people from continuing violence. Uh, pepper pistol, this pepper pistol shoots a stream. It has a light, strobing and straight light. Uh, it's a steady light. And this is how we clear uh, areas and spaces, uh, such as vacant homes and um, yeah, non-lethal. The Collecticon blends together uh, all your different martial arts, but it makes it simpler uh, to apply. So we're either going to escape from the person by getting away from them, or we're going to come in and take control of them. Or we come in to immobilize them and take them into custody. But standing there exchanging blows in a fighting scenario is not, is not an option for us. But the psychological belief system is just as important as the physical, uh, the physicality of the service provider. So if psychologically you're not prepared to be selfless, then you won't be. The maxims and things that the police go by these days are all based on a shoot first kind of mentality and it's, it's, it's just wrong. For example, uh, law enforcement will say things to each other commonly. They'll say, um, hey, stay safe out there when they leave each other uh, at the end of roll call. When a police officer is going off to work, they'll say, hey, stay safe out there. Uh, what we say is that is in totally inappropriate because the only way to stay safe out there is to not go into danger. So what I teach and what we say to each other is make it safe out there. Make it safe out there means that's what you're supposed to do. Your task is if there's danger over there, you have an obligation to go over there and make sure that that is safe, to make safe. You, how do I get you to come to Cleveland? Well, that's the, that's the objective is to go to all the cities and, and we want to kind of use Detroit as the hub right. and say, listen, it worked there. So you heard of Detroit, whatever problems you're having here, you know, they were worse there, it works.